I'm going to get to a review of this excellent new album by Shea Noir, The Lotus Child, and I don't want to do the thing of <laughs> describing something that's almost entirely made uh, by a woman uh, in the context of a man, but I'm going somewhere with this, so, so just kind of follow me if you would. So, you know, recently, Brownsville Ka, the rapper Ka, he died, right? And it's a very sad story. I've been reviewing his music for a few years now, and I haven't really known how to recognize him. You know, how to really do something on this channel. I, don't know, I changed my thumbnail. <laughs> that, that's about as much as I did. I left some comments on other people's tributes and videos. But I felt like what I said about his art was basically as much of a tribute as I could do. But I think it's important that we remember that part of what makes him so great is not just his excellent music, but the, his story, but like who he was as an artist. Like, try to appreciate the fact that he was independent, released all of his music on his own, self-produced, so he made the beats that he rapped on. He like, wanted to make it, but that wasn't the goal. It's like... Making it was not the ends. It was just a thing that he could do in his life. Recognition was great, but he had a full-time job and he was okay. He made art for the purpose, really, of making art. Not to get rich, not to be famous, but just to do it because he felt that he had to. He used his raps to represent his life, represent his people, represent his place, you know, like where he was in the world, where he came from. He did not exaggerate. He was a describer. And what I want to do is, is appreciate that in Ka by saying not many people do that. That's rare in any art, okay? Any art on human earth, that is rare. But it's, I would say, especially rare in modern music and rare in rap. That's how I want to approach Chez Noir. Not just say, oh, here's another dope female MC from Buffalo. Uh, no, let's, just, let's not do that. Let's say, hey, <laughs> here's somebody who's actually in that same very small school. This school of Ka. Now listen, Chez Noir is not at his heights, at least not yet. In terms of production, it's like less mystical lyrics, maybe less layers of everything. But still, I think if we actually break it down, I, I think we'll see. Independent. She could be on a label. Of course she could be. But she's not. She releases her own music. Ka was a full-time firefighter. She co-owns a barber shop with her husband. Okay? Like, she's okay. She's set. She can lead a life of dignity and happiness. She's figured out. She's used what money she's made from music to invest in something important. You know, she represents where she's from. It's not Brownsville, Brooklyn. It's Buffalo, but she represents her city very well. She still lives in her city. Much like Ka, she is political, but not like, not performative, you know? Like she's not, you know, the album cover is not her in fatigues, you know? It's not her trying to be some kind of soldier, but if you actually listen to her lyrics, she describes a lot of interest. She, she describes in a very interesting way the plight of black Americans, especially the plight of black Americans in post-industrial, de-industrialized cities like Buffalo, and she does it in a way where you don't feel preached to, you don't feel like you're at a, at a meeting, you know? And she does the same thing for her position as a woman, you know? She's very, very, very feminist, but that's not the focus. She doesn't talk about feminism. She just is an excellent woman who just describes her existence. She describes the thoughts in her head. She just allows herself to be herself. She's not wearing a mask. She's not wearing some kind of costume or anything to be something else. She is just her. And that's a special thing, especially when the music's dope. <laughs> Thank you for auditing the Always Positive New Music Review Show, hosted by a French professor who really, I just, I, I like Chez Noir. I just really like her, her, her style. I, I like her approach. And the cool thing is that she's growing. You know, I, I said that she's not at Ka's level, but I don't think that she could never be at Ka's level. This album is not like some quantum leap forward where I compare this to, you know, her last couple projects I've reviewed and say, oh, this is way ahead but there's incremental growth, which I think makes sense with her personality. She, she writes these great sample-based beats. They're better than they were in the past. They're a little better worked. Her rhymes are better. Her flow is better. I think her storytelling is better. Like everything, like we just get to see someone improve. And the reason that she's improving too is because she took time off. 
listen, I, I get a lot of emails from, from independent artists all the time. And if you send it to me and I don't respond, don't take it personally. I just get a lot and I don't know how to respond to these things because it's, hey, crow. It's, I, I'm kind of in an awkward place, you know? We're good. You know, so like the idea that like she's not trying to make it at any costs. She took a couple years off from rap and she just, I don't know, figured out her life. The kind of take it or leave it attitude, I don't think lessens the impact of the art. Now listen, I, I don't want to like do the thing of like marginalizing female MCs more than they're already marginalized by talking about them as female MCs. At the same time, one must be realistic and understand the way that the market works, the way that human that the human brain works. Okay. And it's interesting because it's a kind of double marginalization. You know, if you are in academics, there's a term called intersectionality, which is where you don't just study sort of one vector of oppression, but you study them as they overlap, right? So uh, a woman who is also a woman, a person of color, that's a kind of intersection of different kinds of mistreatment by society. That's not her thing. She doesn't talk about being intersex intersectional. But what makes her work so great is that she just is. And, and that's the thing. And maybe that's the thing that I love so much about Ka as well. He's just a dude. He's just a dude. And he's an interesting dude. He's a talented dude. But he's just a dude. And then he raps. And you listen to it. And he breaks things down. And you think about them. And then you move on. Shay Noir, just a lady. You know? Like, one of the things that frustrates me the most about... about uh, female rappers is I, I feel bad for the way that they are compelled to present themselves by the society, by the record labels, whatever it is, with the, the, the level of presentation, the sort of the fakeness of sort of the body and the accoutrements to the body. There's just something to just a human being who just wakes up and just raps. Anyways, I went to her website. You should go to her website. Turns out she's going to be releasing a collaboration album with Love the Genius, which is great because I reviewed that album a couple weeks ago. It's awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> just And just to make this clear, if you are marginalized for one or two ways and you simply impose your existence on the world, that is in and of itself a political act. Okay, so me doing this is not a political act because I've been given all of the institutional power just by the facts of my birth, right? Being a cis head weight straight male, right? That is just given to me. Just ba da, okay? So if I want to be political, you know, I have to be like, yeah, no, you really, you really need to vote uh, for Kamala. I know. Uh, it sucks on Palestine, but uh, you just got to do it. <laughs> Sorry, you just got to do it. You just got to do it. You'd be as mad as you want, but if you think women are human beings and they deserve to have uh, autonomy over their own body, you see, see, that's political. But but the, the fact of this video is not political. Okay. And then also on her website she sells I'm sorry, I almost I almost got stuck into a tongue twister. She sells shea butter. She sells shea butter by the okay? Which is just a beautiful thing because, you know, it's a lot of uh, rappers, female rappers, will sell beauty products or will advertise beauty products or will advertise, you know, underwear, perfume or whatever. Shea butter is perfect because it is a very commonly used substance, primarily by black Americans for skincare. And it's like, it sort of represents her so well as <laughs> like, here's a staple. Here's a thing that you actually need. Not a thing that, you know, this is a thing you actually need and, and I'm going to sell it. So I think that's very cool. I also, hey, white people, we got to moisturize too. It's a, <laughs> it's a thing. I started moisturizing a couple years ago and it makes my life way better. Like, to, like seriously, three times a day I moisturize. Yeah, it feels great too. Like you just get used to it. It's awesome. All right, so let me get to the album I go through. I want to start off actually with the first track, which is maybe the best track. It's hard to tell. It's called Shadow Puppet. Um, it has a, has a spoken word section here by someone named Abidjan Oyewole. At least I think that's him doing the, the section. Most lyrics are not on Genius. And the reason I love this song is I'm going to send you to a clip. I'm going to send you to a clip of her performing it on daytime TV. Okay. I want you to I want you to want Shay Noir to succeed the way I do. 
You go on this clip, it has 700 views. And it's WIVB, like local TV. And it's so wonderful that she's there, she's performing this song where she wrote the beats, she wrote the rhymes, she performed them, she's just standing there, just there. Just, you know, you just picture yourself, whatever, a month ago, and you're just some lady in Buffalo, and you're getting your kids, uh, you know, your kids just went off to school, you're some dude, uh, you know, and the wife went off to work, and you're at home, and you're doing the dishes, and you got the, you got the TV on to see what the polls are saying, or what the weather's going to be like, and then there's just this lady who just comes up here and performs, and the first lyric is, my thoughts are paralyzed by poor black mothers, family circle full of poor black black couples. Bam, right there going into the questions of race, class, and gender, right off the bat, but in a very engaging uh, way. This great spoken word poetry, one of the themes of this album is black death and, and, and incarceration, you know, a state of America that we're in. Once again, I'd like to quote uh, my colleague Justin Hunt when I say, I lack the perspective to properly contextualize these things that I'm talking about, okay? I'm just a tourist, so if I talk about an artist who talks about black death, that does not mean that I think I know about what it feels like to be black. It means I know what it feels like to listen to people who recount their experiences and try to analyze those, uh, those depictions, okay? That's what I'm trying to do. I like how she talks about how she's struggling to express herself. And it's cool because Glorilla had a, a very similar line on her album. And I think this is an important thing. This is why it does make sense to a certain extent to put female rappers together because their lived experience is layers upon layers upon layers. And that's a shared experience being asked to be made, being asked to be small, constantly be smaller, be smaller, be smaller, be quieter, be quieter. What's that thing you could say? Be more demure, you know, just to say something, just to have something to say a lot of young girls and young women and women and old women struggle to express themselves because they have been trained by society not to. So, I, I thought the crows were done. It's cool. They're having a party back there. <clears throat> Try stealing my art, I'll cut off your hand like a thief. Keep it in a box like the Adams Family. <laughs> I like it. It's a little bit goofy. It's fun. I'm glad that she kept some of her goofy stuff on here. Um, I also like how this poet talks about graffiti and sort of like that's a way of talking to the world. Let's remember hip-hop has four elements. I love how the beat gets a little bit more empathetic, like more emphatic and layered at the end. Then we get to the song Black Girl featuring Rhapsody. Oh my God. If this album were just two, were just two songs long, I'd be done right here. It's a, it quotes the song Black Pearl by Sonny Charles and the Checkmates, and it cuts out, so it's, you know, Black Girl, so like an old, like, soul tune, actually produced by Phil Spector. <laughs> no friend of black women, but what are you going to do? Um, and then cuts out, and it's this basically, like, Cuban Link style Wu-Tang. Okay, now that was not a bird. What the hell was that? Did you hear that? That's, like, the craziest noise I've ever heard out here. All right, sorry. <clears throat> cuts out and becomes like a, a Wu-Tang Clan only built for Cuban links style beat it's just super hard and awesome Shea Noir is here draw comparisons but I erased what you drew with that pencil my haters was close my friends knew my potential mistakes gave me common sense but in school it was mental never underestimate a student with info keep, keep a cup in my hands like I'm itching for loose change my life is an open book every sentence true pain very earnest, straightforward rapping. It leads right into Rhapsody's verse. You know, I reviewed her album as well this year. I think it's pretty clear that, that there's like different, the same way there's sort of different godfathers of modern rap. I think there's different godmothers of modern rap made by women. And, you know, I think you, you have, you have your, your Nikki school and I think you have your Rhapsody school. And I think they're both important. I think it's very important that we don't pit them against each other and say, this is good, this is bad, because... That's how patriarchal domination continues, by pitting women against each other. That's how racism continues. That's by pitting races against each other, right? That's how this thing all works. That, that's how it always filters to the top. So I'm not saying one's better or one's not. But I am saying it's interesting to see them split. And just Rhapsody's great. Award shows advertising, I'm not watching, because if I don't, see the, I don't see the culture they claim to be supporting, harmony is lacking, wait for the talent to fall back in. My ns act in XL when ns haven't excelled. That ish weirdo, huh? 
Robert De Niro in a taxi ending depending on my compassion because right now my mind's on blasting B words. It's great. It's a great song. I like how I like the energy between them. I like that it's just rap. Just rap. You know? Damn. I left my coffee inside. Sorry. Right. Smash the like bucket, subscribe. A V A A stands for awesome videos. Always I will always heart a comment that says that, okay? <clears throat> I know you're all probably listening to Tyler the Creator, but listen, compared to this Tyler the Creator album, is you know, it's pretty similar actually. You know, self produced album by someone who's trying to explain their existence. It just happens to be that this doesn't have the the backing of a multinational conglomeration. So props to you for watching this. Sister Act, another killer Wu Tang style beat. Oh, our flow is so good. The bullets is the data, and the weapons is computers, and it has this chorus of Lift Every Voice, which, you know, I remember the first time I heard Lift Every Voice and sing. I was in church. I'd never heard the song before. I'd never heard of the song before. I was in my 30s, okay? And I heard this song, and I was like, what the? F what is this song? Listen, I used to go to a church that was the, 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 the whitest church you could possibly imagine, okay? Episcopalian in a suburb okay just like ah ha ha okay so waspy i sting people okay that that's how this was like but but have you heard that song <laughs> oh my god it will give you the spirit you know and that's the thing that's the thing in my opinion music can do that so i can hear gospel music and i and i can get the feeling and i can hear bach and i can get the feeling it's all human greatness used to reflect the glory of God. However, that, that form comes to you. If you can learn to appreciate it, you can learn to appreciate it. But anyways, that was, and then after I, I went back home, I was like, I looked up the song. I'm like, oh, oh, it's called the Black National Anthem by many people. Oh, the Obama saying at the inauguration. Oh, this is like a huge thing in a culture that I really, really should have known by now, but no one ever told me because I never asked, but also no one ever told me. So uh, I really like that in here. Uh, every every sin is a choice, a big theme on this album. Guns N' Roses featuring 38 Special. Hey, some of you have been asking me, Sky, why aren't you reviewing the 38 Special and Benny the Butcher album? Let me tell you why. I don't have anything to, anything interesting to say, okay? <laughs> it's great, it's awesome, awesome bars, awesome beats, whole thing, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. But I do a lot of videos. And at this point, I've done the whole round of discovering these two artists and then I've done another round of like talking about why they're great and then I've done a round of like let's not forget how great they are and take them for granted we still have to review their music but I don't want to do like a review where I talk about talking about talking about talking about it it's great <laughs> have a listen but you know what I like the Shane Noir much better I think it's better all more interesting starts with this uh, high heavy vinyl hiss pitched up sample in the back these ringing guitar nice flow change throughout i'm a late bloomer still planting seeds i grew a lotus a queen that deserves a crown but they still won't give me my roses then this great tupac quote all about the rose that comes from the concrete sorry i have to check my baby monitor a rose that comes from the concrete all about this like you know like like <laughs> it's a great tupac interview question where he says you see a rose that grows from a concrete and you're just talking about how dirty it is why aren't you appreciating the rose ties in perfectly to Shea Noir's verse nice solid fable verse from 38 special the rabbit did more than the turtle and end up losing the race yeah that's true uh, Jody Landon featuring Jack Davey more great super cracking vinyl sounds all this like lyric the the light will guide us some multisyllabic rhyme runs here she describes her brain as like, this cool kind of wandering piano and stuttering rhythm it's really well produced it's like an apartment complex inside my brain my sins live rent free thought I'd abandoned hiding from the man upstairs nice image of the brain as a mind and then we get to Wiz Love featuring Bayri and this is the thing not my kind of song. Nope. Mm -mm. I don't like kind of 80s, 70s sounding like R&B music, a love song, talks about sex and all that stuff. But you know what? I'm wrong. I love this song. I love this song because I don't like these songs because they feel performative and they feel, they feel kind of fake and, you know, ooh, girl, I want to love you till six in the morning and then get up and do it again and the wine and the roses and the chocolate and the shag carpets and all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what this is. This is like... A love song, not a sex song, although it does start off with, you know, talking about sex and cool, you know, like the, but this is like, if you're in a happy marriage, if you're in a real happy marriage, this is your song. 
because I relate to this. Now, listen, my, my father's not in jail. My father's dead. My, my wife's father's not in jail, so I can't relate to this little detail that they throw in there. We don't have the same lived experience, but it describes a real non-toxic relationship with its difficulties, with its joys, with everything. Thank you, Shay Noir, for presenting a song that is just a love song choices nice chunky stuttering beat interesting production very heartfelt story about her real life talking about giving up rap for a year and never choosing love so she chooses herself talks about drunk driving what is it tyler says on his new album that i listened to for 38 minutes before i did this video i hope you take your mask off this is about taking your mask off a great sting string section at the end to say goodbye and then angels produced by static selecta the only song produced by someone else i think it's on purpose because it, it kind of makes sense now like static selecta maybe is the sort of inspiration or the primary inspiration for Shane noir because this feels like the rest of the beats but maybe just a little I don't know, more experienced, more mature, you know, like there's a level of polish on it. And it's a song just about two people in her life who who, who she doesn't have. I think her younger brother, if I read, the, read it properly. And what's cool is that she's really at, at peace with this death. You know, it's a very sad, sad song. Again, I lack the perspective to properly contextualize, okay? I do not live, I do not suffer from the war on drugs. I do not suffer from the... The, the war on poverty, the war on the poor that has existed in this country for the past long time, okay, but especially since 1980. So, you know, I don't know anything that's being said here. I just know that the way that she describes it helps me to feel it and understand it better. She describes it in a way that I feel a lot of compassion for because she's not performing sadness. She's talking about her brother who's dead and how she wished that she saw him more, but she seems at peace. Nice kind of uh, singing here from uh, Soldy Ghost. Kind of reminds me of Cocaine from Snoop Dogg's albums uh, around the turn of the century. Stay on fort like Stacey Adams. <laughs> I really like that guy's voice. Uh, and then a whole verse about her uncle who like I think died in jail and how she rapped for him on the phone. And it's just very moving and very real. And it ties into these much larger things, you know, uh, Our Prisons Obsolete by Angela Davis. If you never read it, you should read it. It's a great book. Really, really uh, dives into a lot of these problems. But it's just done so well. So anyways, I, I really want to uh, encourage you to go listen to this music, get to know Shay Noir. She may be the next big thing, but I don't think she cares if she's the next big thing. She's just her, and she's making great work, and she's using hip-hop the best way it can be, which is to be the voice, the voiceless, okay? She's just a person who we don't usually hear from expressing her life and her experience. Those are my Patreons. They help me to buy music. I'll tell you what. I'm going to buy the album, and if I make this shot, I'm also going to buy some shea butter, Okay? Made by her. It's pronounced C H E, accent aigu. Okay, you ready? <sighs> so close. It would annoy my wife if I got it anyways because it would just take up clutter. I, I'm on the fence. We'll see. Okay, till next time. There's the camera.